Whenever I discuss old games with people, I always get two kinds of responses. Some might love a game because they grew up with it, or hate it because it's too old and there's no point of going back. Some might not even try it in the first place. Me? I'm here to look at old games I didn't grow up with and determine whether they're worth playing or not. Welcome to my brand new show. Welcome to No Nostalgia. One thing you've got to know about me is I hate JRPGs. I hate constantly bumping into random enemies. Fuck! Fuck! Oh, fuck off! I hate how long the battle takes to start. And I hate that by the time I finish the story, I feel older than the game I'm playing. Why? So, playing Chrono Trigger, a game from 1995 and the peak of the JRPGs, I really wasn't too hopeful. But hey, everyone who's played this game can't stop sucking its dick, so it can't be that bad, right? In Chrono Trigger, you play as Chrono, or, if you me, Chrono wakes up one morning and goes to the Millennial Fair, where he's soon swept up in a time travel plot, where he has to travel through time to stop Labos from destroying the world. One thing I immediately noticed playing through the game was how well it was paced. Comparing it to Squaresoft's following game, Final Fantasy VII, FF7 is like a big chocolate cake. FF is delicious and beautiful, but there's just so much of it that by the time I'm done, I just feel sick. I just want to throw up, I just want to lie down, I just want to die. Chrono Trigger, however, is like a rare steak. It's lean, just the right amount of fat, and it's so damn delicious. I just want to grab it and just come all over it. I f***ing love steak. Doing everything in the game will only take about 20 to 25 hours, which is short compared to most JRPGs clocking in at over 40. However, it's not really a bad thing. The game charges ahead at a blistering pace devoid of any filler content, or long boring segments, like the Final Fantasy Remake sewer stages, as if this wasn't enough fun already. World exploration and combat sections are usually the biggest pace killer in any JRPG, but in Chrono Trigger the maps are fairly small and easy to navigate. You get to see the same map in different time periods. It's so cool to see the subtle differences between the Dark Ages and the future, and even some places in between that I won't spoil. The rich pixel art environments and textures are so gorgeous, and so much easier to appreciate when you're not being constantly interrupted by random encounters. Even the combat is paced incredibly well. Seeing enemies on screen allows you to sometimes avoid them, and a number of enemies never seems too tedious or overwhelming, being perfectly balanced. Even the transitions are quick and snappy. Instead of a flash, and a slow transition into battle, with Chrono Trigger it's just, bam, I'm ready. Nice and quick. The combat is your typical turn-based affair, with three party members, items, and an active time battle gauge. However, a unique feature that keeps the combat interesting is the tech system. The tech system appears at first just to be abilities unique to the player, kind of like magic in Final Fantasy. These are abilities shared amongst two or three party members. For example, if you learn the dual tech firewall, instead of Chrono doing his regular cyclone attack where he spins hitting multiple enemies, Luca will hit Chrono with fire, causing him to do fire damage with a cyclone. This encouraged me to switch out my party quite often, as I always wanted to unlock new tech abilities and see what sort of wacky combinations I could come up with. This also served a narrative purpose as well, 
It makes sense that the more time you spend together with your party, not only will you get stronger, but you will also get better at working together as you bond over the course of the adventure. Your party will have varying set roles in combat, Chrono being the fast sword fighter with lightning magic, or Marl being a support type character with ice magic, and so on. This gives you more options when approaching different fights. If you're struggling, you might just need to switch up your party. Chrono Trigger's difficulty is perfectly balanced. A lot of JRPGs typically fall into the trap of either being too easy, constantly just spamming the attack button like in Pokemon, or too difficult, where the only option is to just grind for what seems like an eternity. One thing you've got to know about me is I'm an absolutely huge music guy. I have such an appreciation for music, video game music especially. I mean, I'll pretty much listen to anything, as long as it's not in the charts. I mean, last thing I want to be exposed to is Justin's Beaver. I think one thing that goes underappreciated from most gamers when it comes to games is a good quality soundtrack. People don't realise how much an atmosphere or a mood or your emotions or even the memories of a game can be affected by a good quality soundtrack. With this game in particular, I cannot tell you how the hell they managed to get this to run on the Super Nintendo sound chip, because without a doubt, this game is fucking incredible. The soundtrack is amazing. The music elevates the story to new heights with just absolute bangers. Like, how can you not get amped up at this? And let us not forget one of the best boss themes ever created. After a gauntlet of enemies, you hear nothing but chanting. So you follow it into a room where candles start lighting around you. And it's just you. And here. The wind is blowing, the music is calm yet intimidating, but as soon as he draws his weapon the gloves are off, the music ramps up, giving you one of the hardest boss fights in the game, and it creates this epic rich atmosphere that just elevates the game to new heights, being one of the most memorable moments in the entire game. Characterization on the whole is done superbly. Whenever you play a game with loads of party members, there's always one or two that fall by the wayside. You know, whether you're talking about Ashley and Caden in Mass Effect. I mean, does anyone give a shit about them? See, nobody cares. <laughs> but I genuinely love every single character in this game. Everyone in your party is just so good, not just from a gameplay standpoint, but just from their characters. I mean, this game makes a frog a badass. Yes. This gross reptile covered in slime. I told you, it is not slime, it is mucus! You might have noticed by now that I've not really touched on the story, but this story is best played completely blind. So if you've not played it before, skip to a timestamp and play the game. You can get it on the Super Nintendo, the PlayStation 1, you can get it on the DS, Steam, or even the phone if you hate yourself. So, if you don't want to get spoiled... GET OUT! Right, for the rest of you, let's take a deep dive into this story. Time travel stories are so hard to do. I've only seen them done right a handful of times. Got Back to the Future films, uh, Majora's Mask, Terminator 1 and 2... Uh, well, Chrono Trigger. I mean, this game takes place in seven different times in history. and goes back and forth so many times it would have been so easy to completely shit the bed. But with time travel, it's weaved so perfectly into the narrative that every little detail seems to have been thought out. Why is the Masamune so powerful? Oh, because it was a ruby dagger that was transformed after plunging into the mammon machine. Time travel is well woven into the gameplay too. There are mysterious chests in 600 AD. You could open them and get rewards. 
or you could easily activate them, then go to 1000 AD in your time machine, then open them for a stronger variant. Things like that are so cool. I see that I too am guilty of sucking this game's dick. Before I go for seconds, I'm going to have to let out a few grievances. I know, the flawless SNES masterpiece might not be flawless after all, but I don't think any game is. One of the best written and most interesting characters in the game is of course Magus. And once Chrono dies, you're given a choice to either kill Magus or to let him live and join your team. This is an intriguing dilemma, as you might feel sorry for Magus after finding out about his tragic backstory, but you could equally still want revenge for him killing Cyrus and turning Frog into the Frog. However, if Magus survives and joins your party, he doesn't really do anything. I get there are console limitations, but I can't help but feel like there are missed opportunities at places like Cyrus's grave or Ozzy's fort. It would have been very cool to see Magus realise that maybe killing Cyrus wasn't something he should have done after all, and seeing some sort of redemption arc for him. Another complaint of mine is, I'm not really the biggest fan of silent protagonists. I do believe that they can work, I think Doom and Crash are good examples of this, and I understand the reason for silent protagonists. They're supposed to be a vessel for the player to project themselves onto. However, in a game like Chrono Trigger that focuses so much on the narrative, I think a game would benefit from a main character who has, well, actual character. Not only would this make moments like his sacrifice and his relationship with Mara more impactful, but also when he does die, you're left with the rest of the party, who all have personalities and unique dialogue. Because Chrono doesn't talk, it leads to really awkward exchanges like this. Did you find the girl? She what? One of Chrono Trigger's most defining features are the multiple endings. These range from wholesome, to funny, to just plain weird. With Chrono Trigger you won't find a dialogue wheel, or any clear options of what choices you'll be making. A lot of the interactions you make through the game you might not even realise had any lasting effects. I haven't played that many JRPGs as much as I like to moan about them, and the ones I have played seem to be full of just so many boring side quests and tedious mini games. If I'm not spending a lifetime breeding chocobos, I'm jumping ropes or digging with chocobos? I mean seriously, what's with these games just having anything that's not story be boring as sin? This sucks. I know your first thing to say is, well just don't do them. Well, if you notice by how many platinum trophies I've got, I have this weird thing where I have to just do everything in the game, no matter how much it just makes me want to kill myself. I'm just like, well, yeah, I'll do it anyway, because, I don't know, I guess I hate fun. The side quests in Chrono Trigger, however, are absolutely fantastic. They remind me a lot of Mass Effect's loyalty missions. Yeah, they're optional content, but they're so well written and add so much character development that I could never see myself playing through the game without doing them. My favourite one being Fiona's Forest. It's so intense trying to save Luca's mum. I feel like my palms are sweating and I feel like I'm going to fail every time I try it. And knowing that if I fail there's no redo, I just feel like she's going to be a cripple forever. I've fallen and I can't get up! It's so lovely to see the interactions afterwards with Luca and Robo. And Robo just being the goodest boy. Can we just appreciate how fucking wholesome Robo is? And no, no, don't hurt Robo. Don't fuck. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Stop it! Can't you see what's bothering him? Stop it! Chrono Trigger is a game I have no nostalgia for. I never played it until recently, but it's quickly become one of my favourite games of all time. And that's not because of when it came out. Today, it is one of my favourite games. Despite its age, it still looks and sounds amazing. It has this ripe with compelling characters and an absolutely amazing story. I hope this video will help you appreciate older games, as this is a game that needs to be remembered. And with there only being two games in this franchise, I hope this game doesn't die and just get forgotten to time. But let's not stop there. Let's keep this conversation going in the comments and let me know which video you'd like me to do next. This was my first episode of Nostalgia, and I want to keep it going, so I appreciate all the support you can give me. Thank you for all your time, and I'll see you in the next video.